in 1967, CIA spies detected a monstrously huge Soviet aircraft parked on the Caspian coast. Mysteriously labeled KM, the top-secret Soviet development appeared to be the largest plane ever built, and U.S. intelligence at first didn't know what to make of it. Its unusual design suggested it would have the unprecedented ability to fly close to the surface of the sea, helping it to go undetected by most Western radar systems. Aircraft engineers and designers globally had long been dreaming of integrating a ground effect to aircraft, which would allow them to hover close to the ground. If such a thing were to be accomplished, the aircraft would have very low energy losses and an ability to avoid detection by most aircraft radar systems. However, such close proximity to the ground presents a number of challenges, including the obvious difficulty of avoiding crashing with the terrain. Russian naval and aircraft designer Rostislav Alexiev realized this particular challenge could be overcome by making a plane that could use the ground effect over water. Furthermore, a flexible and fast low-lying plane could compete and overpower both seaplanes and ships. The Soviet Union saw value in the idea, hoping that an enormous low-lying plane could perhaps turn the tide of power to the USSR. Communist leader Nikita Khrushchev granted Alexeyev almost unlimited resources to create the Karabimakt, which means ship mock-up or prototype in Russian. Development started in 1964 and went on until 1966. Design work was carried out by the Central Hydrofoil Design Bureau, with V. Efimov as lead engineer. Manufacturing took place in Gorky, which is now Nizhny Novgorod, at the Red Sormovo plant, one of the oldest shipbuilding facilities of the Soviet Union. The Ministry of Shipbuilding and Industry directed the funds for the project. The KM was the first major project of the Ekranoplan, ground effect vehicle lineup, and was special for its monstrous size and payload. By the time the aircraft prototype was finished in 1966, it was the largest aircraft in the world. With a wingspan of 123 feet, or 37.6 meters, and a body 302 feet, or 92 meters long, the KM was intimidatingly large, a little bit longer than a football field between the goal lines. It could carry an impressive 544 short tons, which would make it the fifth plane in terms of the greatest maximum takeoff weight in 2020 if it were still in use. The KM was powered by eight Dobrian VD-7 turbojets forward to the fuselage, plus two more in the tail so it could counter an additional thrust for takeoff. The aircraft could fly as low as 16 feet above the water, and was designed to use the ground effect within a range of 16 to 33 feet, or 5 to 10 meters. It could avoid detection by flying lower than the minimum altitude of traditional anti-aircraft radar. The Karabi Max could fly at a maximum speed of 310 miles or 500 kilometers per hour. As part of the Soviet Navy, the USSR saw the vehicle as a boat-like plane, even going so far as to register it as a marine vessel in their documentation. Test pilots were recruited from the Soviet military air forces, however. Before the first test, the pilot broke a bottle of champagne against the aircraft's nose, which was usually done in the USSR on seafaring ships before they took off for the first time. As with most of the Soviet Union's military projects, the planning and construction of the Korobimakt was a well-kept secret. However, the U.S. invested much of its intelligence resources on spying on Soviet weapons development, and it was through one of the spy satellites overlooking the Caspian Sea that the U.S. detected the KM parked on the shore just one year after the aircraft's first successful test flight. Analysts handed the images were shocked and confused about the gigantic aircraft with a strange square wing. These intelligence analysts believed it to be a supersized version of a conventional seaplane, rather than the more terrifying 550-ton Ekranoplan capable of flying over the water at a low altitude. Since the KM letters painted on the plane had a meaning unknown to the US, it was nicknamed Caspian Monster, both to mimic the letters and to match the location it was found in. Subsequently, the nickname by which it became known in the US military circles was Caspian Sea Monster. 
U.S. officers worried about the behemoth plane at the time when it felt like the country was being bested in the ongoing space race. The CIA, in turn, set up a special task force to gather intelligence on the vehicle. They built an unmanned reconnaissance vehicle, a drone, under Project Aquiline, which means eagle-like. The drone was made to resemble a large bird to go undetected, with 3.5 horsepower and an 8.5 feet or 2.6 meter wingspan. With the intelligence gathered by the spy drone, the CIA determined that the plane could not fly high, and the intelligence community relaxed, believing the plane was unfinished and unimpressive due to its inability to gain significant altitude. Since work on ground-effect vehicles was not a priority for the West at the time, it was never considered that that could be its purpose. The U.S. would not learn the truth until the 1980s. The completed Caspian Sea Monster was transported by the Volga River to an Air Force base near Kaspiysk, on the shore of the Caspian Sea from Gorky. To keep it out of sight, it was covered in camouflage and only transported during nighttime. Preparations for the first test flight were completed, and the first test was conducted by the aircraft designer, Rostislav Alexiev himself, on October 16, 1966. This rare occurrence demonstrated his confidence and passion for his creation. The conducted test and following flights gave the USSR positive results. The KM had an optimum cruising speed of 267 miles, or 430 kilometers per hour, which meant it could fly fast while staying fuel efficient. While the 500 kilometers per hour made for its maximum operational speed, the KM could go as fast as 650 kilometers per hour, with some sources claiming it could be pushed up to an impressive 740 kilometers or 460 miles per hour. With these promising results, the USSR thought the plane could be used for special missions and rescues. Unfortunately for the Caspian Sea Monster, the design started showing many weaknesses as soon as it was completed. During its extensive testing life of 15 years at the base, it was constantly modified and tweaked. With this slow progress, designer Alexeyev drifted towards other projects for his Akronoplan lineup. In 1980, the Caspian Sea Monster was swallowed by the Caspian Sea due to a mistake by a pilot. There were no casualties, as the pilot was able to eject the aircraft and get rescued. However, the gigantic plane floated for about a week as it sank into the depths. The mistake that sunk the monster was trying to get it to take off without going at full throttle. Little effort was made to recover the aircraft since its heavy weight made it incredibly challenging to retrieve. The Caspian Sea Monster sank to the bottom of the sea where it remains. No plans to build a second prototype were made. While it was tested, the KM maintained the title of largest aircraft ever built and currently sits in second place, only behind the Antonov AN-225 Miraya, which was flown in 1988 for the first time, almost a decade after the Caspian Sea Monster sank. The Central Hydrofoil Design Bureau did, however, decide to continue with the Ekronoplan planes through the 1980s, which introduced the MD-160 into the Soviet Navy and into the Russian Navy after the fall of the Union. As testing with the Caspian Sea Monster was ongoing, Alexeyev worked on developing Akronoplans that could be medium size or even small. Out of his efforts came the A-90 Orionok, which means eaglet. It was a smaller plane, weighing 140 tons and being 190 feet or 58 meters long. It had only two turbojets compared to the 10 on the KM and one turboprop engine. It could go up to 400 kilometers per hour for 1500 kilometers and had a cruising altitude of 5 to 10 meters, or 16 to 33 feet, the same as the Caspian Sea Monster. The first flying prototype was tested on the Volga River in 1972, and the following year it was broken down and taken to the Caspian Sea base for further testing. This prototype crashed in 1975 due to a deficiency in the metal alloy used for the hull. The metal alloy was changed, and the project continued. Three more models were built, and the crashed prototype was repaired. The four planes entered military service in 1979 and remained operational until 1993, when they were allegedly stored at the naval base on the Caspian coast. All development and testing took place on the shores of either the Caspian or Black Seas. 
The USSR denominated the Orionok as an Akronoplan Class B because it could achieve an altitude of 9,800 feet or 3,000 meters, which meant it could rise above a Class A, purely ground effect plane, but could remain using the ground effect for longer than a Class C plane, which only used it for takeoffs and landings. The program to build Soviet ground effect planes was supported by the Minister of Defense, Dmitry Ustinov, who pushed for the development and integration of the Orionok. The high-speed transports were deemed a success, and a more reasonable pursuit than the Caspian Sea Monster. The Soviet Navy ordered 120 planes, and then reduced the order to around 30, which they intended to send to the Black and Baltic Seas for deployment. Other attempts to make ground effect planes went to the wayside just as the Caspian Sea Monster did. In 1987, a 400-ton plane, the Lundkras Akronoplan, was built to launch missiles. It was renamed Spashaitl to be used for rescue missions, but then the project was abandoned due to issues with longitudinal stability and the navigational system. When the Minister of Defense passed away in 1985 and Marshal Sokolov took over the position, he canceled the program. At the time, only three Orionok planes and one Lund-class plane were still operational, at the same naval base by Kaspiysk where the Caspian Sea Monster was developed. As the USSR fell, interest in Akronoplans was kept by the Volga shipyard in Nizhny Novgorod, where smaller models were designed and developed for civilian use. However, development of cargo carrier versions of the plane stalled and sank, just like the hulking Caspian Sea Monster. Mm -hmm.